Hi all, welcome to another episode of Data Never Lie, a podcast from Analytics Boosters, a place where I talk about data, analytics and much more. Uh, today I'm honored and pleased to have with us Steen Rasmussen, uh, Data Director of IH Nordic, pronounced correct? Yes, it's Perfect. wonderful. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, I can say he's my friend from a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we met in before pandemic. Uh, he was present at uh, uh, Market Analytics Summit. We met twice, two, two times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we met at Measure Camp Italy, London, and so on. And it's very uh, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, some question related to analytics world. The first one is. Um, could you please give us uh, a picture of the analytics state of art at the moment? Slugging with tools, uh, uh, EI, uh, J4 bugs, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. so, so for me, uh, man, I, I think that reflects where I am. I think the analytics is changing right now. I mean, if it, and I see this as a massive opportunity. So, so due to the the migration from universal analytics to GA4, uh, everybody has to rethink what they're doing. And if you add the magic sprinkle sauce of GDPR and compliance into that, it's a very fine opportunity to change your thinking. So instead of, like in the old days, trying to track everything, now just going in and focusing on what yeah. do we really need to track, because that's also in line with the law. So actually, focusing more on what to track instead of trying to track everything because yeah. that's no longer legal. Say, what do we actually need to track? Then, then focus on the other end saying, the decision that people are supposed to do, use the data for. Yeah. So starting somewhere else so, in the organization saying, I actually have some stakeholders who mm -hmm. are supposed to use some of this data. Yeah. So I will talk to them first and then I will set up the tracking to give them the data that they need to make the decisions that they're supposed to make. Yeah. So, so, so so, so and, and, and for me, that's a really huge change because it changes the scope of, it changes on, on a, from a data first perspective to yeah. a decision first setup. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Track less, we can say track less to get more. Yeah. And more focus on what you really need to improve your business. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if you look back, so, so I, I use this on stage as well. I say the classic thing as a consultant, you will come into a customer and, and you will say, oh, dear customer, great to see you. What would you like to track? And the customer will look at you like you're stupid and you say, they'll say, Enrico, everything. Yeah. We want to track everything. But the, when I look back, I can see the curse of tracking everything is that you have to maintain everything. Absolutely. And, and suddenly right. analytics becomes a maintenance job and not an action job. So you have way too much maintenance and too little action. Sure. Uh, I'm with you with, with this. Uh, I feel you, and it is the same for, for us and for the, I think, the, the, if you want to have a, a new step forward to do analytics or do marketing yeah. in, the, in the digital world. So another question is related to the first one, but only for the um, EI. Today, everything is AI, artificial intelligence everywhere, mm. chat GPT, copilot, something like that. How do you think uh, uh, artificial intelligence could help uh, analytics people, agencies, and customers? So I think it could, hopefully, and they didn't. I think the challenge is that uh, we need narrower and more dedicated models in mm. relation to, to, to actually really use analy the, the analytics I see the challenge with the very open models is that you put your data into them, they will come up with, with very kind of like, so if you put data into uh, chat GTP, right, you, you will get the most, uh, the most likely answer, not, ne not necessarily an, an analysis because mm -hmm. it doesn't understand numbers, uh, so it will not do the analysis, it will come up with a good, a good recommendation, yep. but it won't, ne not, won't necessarily be the, the, the right one, yeah. right? So, I uh, I saw a, a post on LinkedIn where a guy had made ChatGTP play chess against um, a llama. Yeah. And it's probably one of the worst chess games I've ever seen. They they played so badly, both of them, because they all were only looking at the next move. There was no strategy in it. Yeah. So they were just what is what what is the best move with the pieces like this? So they were just thinking one move ahead. They yeah. were, so so. And that's why, so, so that 
uh, I see. But if you, and if you get these models to play against a dedicated chess uh, AI, they can never win. Yeah, absolutely. because they're specialized in doing that, and that's kind of the models that we need for analytics, the specialized models. Mm -hmm. So I see there's a future for analytics in this, and we can use the current models to learn what where they can tie in. But I feel I don't trust the models enough right now <laughs> to be able to to just let them take over the decision process. Yeah, uh, we we cannot have the uh, punter response to. Uh, machine learning or something like that, we need to learn more yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the second thing I see, and this is kind of a, on, on, the, on the further down the line, I see that what I see right now, I see a lot of people optimizing their, uh, their work processes mm -hmm. with AI. So you do more generative content, you pull AI into do things faster, smarter in relation to how you normally work. But my, the challenge that I see is it's actually that at the end of this, we work under, we're optimizing under the assumption that that the customers will not change their purchase process, okay. right? So, so because, so you will go in and you say, hey, cool, let's do more, uh, more content. We will produce more content. We will have an AI doing generative contents so we can do a blog post every day. Under the assumption that sure, sure. then you'll get more content and more when you search, you'll be more dominant and more people yeah. will come to your website. And everybody else will be doing the same, and there will be too much content. And at the same time, on the other end, the, the, the clients will sit there and say, I cannot digest all this content, so I will get my VA yeah. come up with a recommendation, book, book the best uh, medium with the best agency for me, and they will, their VA will not look at all your generative A content. They will go out and decide yeah. on something else. So the purchase processes are changing, but we're optimizing like that it will never change. And it's yeah. like, Going back to the, uh, the 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 old saying about Ford, uh, he said if you ask the people they wanted faster horses, and I think that's what we're doing right now. We're using AI to make faster horses in marketing. Yeah. We're not really yeah. innovating. We're just doing more of what we're doing already yeah. Yeah. faster. Yeah, and we do with that. And another quick question uh, related to which suggestion would you give to a new guy that want to approach to analytics uh, and data. Um, I think um, you, you know me, and, and for me, it's been the same answer. I think I would say start with understanding the business. Mm -hmm. Saying data is fine, but there's a lot of people out there, and especially with AI now as well, that can do a, a good sure. implementation. But who understands the business, right? So so. Uh, I have the pleasure of doing a training for a class of students in the, at a web analytics school mm -hmm. in Melbourne. And the first thing I teach them is looking at a website and saying, what is the business model? Yeah. Uh, because otherwise we, we kind of drown in the data. There's so much data and we, if we don't understand the business that we're trying to support. So, so and I see the same thing and there's a lot of people who say they want to be analysts, but they don't understand business. Yeah. I see a lack of, we are, more technical yeah. at the moment, or guys are more technical at the moment, but the, there is a lack of business. Yeah, so yeah. comprehensive business, understand what they do or something like that. Yeah, so you, you need the commercial acumen, yeah. kind of the understanding that what is the business in this, what is, why are we doing this, what is the business case? So, and, and you, sometimes you can see the embarrassment in, as analysts, you do some amazing, you think something that is amazing reporting that you present to some management sure. or stakeholder, and in reality, it has no value for them. It's like, as a data project, it's amazing. Yeah. As a business project, it's worthless. Absolutely. Uh, it's something that we see into, uh, into the European uh, way of thinking or something like that. So yeah. how we do. And last question, could you tell us more about uh, IH Nordic, what you do and where you can find and where you, how we can follow you. Yeah. So for me, I'm a sucker for LinkedIn. So that's kind <laughs> of my, 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 my main channel, right? So, so, okay. so, so LinkedIn is the place to follow me. If you do a search for Steen IIH, then I think I'm the only one. Uh, so, so that's kind of the easy part. IH Nordic is, I would call us a boutique agency specialized in, in, in analytics, but we're specialized in analytics in the sense that we're 
uh, we're an own Google agency, so mm -hmm. we believe in that Google Analytics 4 and uh, the Google stack is the solution to all your problems. So that's kind of where we specialize. So it's about data, data activation, but really on the, on the next frontier. We like to say that we work with ambitious customers. Yeah. So if you just want a, a setup, it's not necessarily us. It's, we will be the company to go to if you want to make a setup and then take that data and turn it into something else. And for us, I think the best anecdote for, about IH is saying that we did it for ourselves. So we started with the first, the first larger company in the world, as far as I know, that went to a four-day work week, 30 mm -hmm. hours with full pay. Yeah. By looking at our own use of data and how data could enhance our processes and using that to, to leverage things. Yeah, great thing. Yeah. Great thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So thank you so much for your time, Stin, and thanks to uh, be part of Data Never Lies. And for you guys, uh, stay tuned for another episode of Data Never Lies. Thank you again, Stin. Absolutely, thanks. Thanks.